Praxis Prepper. Everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I want to talk about two things. One of them relates to this device that's next to me. If you've uh, you know, been on YouTube at all, looking into survival and preparedness and stuff, you've probably seen things like this before. If not, we're going to talk about it in just a moment. But first, I want to let you know uh, some news about the Alien Invasion series. Season 2 is starting to be released right now on Patreon.com slash Praxis Prepper. If you're a Patreon member supporting me, keeping these videos coming out to everyone, you already have access to the first episode of Season 2. It's there right now. And I want to let you know that the second episode of Season 2 is going to be released within a couple of days. And the reason I'm mentioning that is, you know, to get excited. Let's all get excited about that. But uh, this, uh, for the second season, I am tagging the end of every episode with credits to thank everyone who has been helping me to make these videos for everybody. So if you are a Patreon supporter, during the time when I release uh, one of the videos, uh, you get your name in the end credits. So if you would like to have your name in the end credits of uh, Season 2, Episode Episode two, it's going to be released within a couple of days. So if you can, uh, you know, pop over to Patreon.com/slash/PracticePrepper. There's a link down in the uh, description below. If you pop over there, and for as little as one dollar a month, I mean, there's lots of different tiers depending on you know how much you're interested in helping, how much you're able to help. Uh, you know, help me to keep these episodes coming to you guys. But for whatever tier you want to be at, for as little as a dollar a month, you get your name in the end credit. So if you're interested in that, and if you're interested in seeing all the episodes early, they don't release on YouTube until June, but they're already starting to pop up over on Patreon.com. Like I said, the first episode of Season 2 is already there, and second is going to be there in a couple days. So, if you want your name in the end credits, patreon.com slash praxisprepper. Pop over for as little as a dollar a month. You can help me keep these episodes coming to you guys, and also get your name in the end credits of that episode. So, let's talk about this thing right here. Now, if, uh, if you've been on YouTube, you know, searching for things related to, you know, emergency preparedness, prepping, all that kind of stuff, you've probably seen videos for something like this. What this is, is a, it's a rocket stove built out of cinder blocks. Now, I've se I've seen a lot of thumbnails for those videos and I never really bothered to look at them because just conceptually I was always kind of thinking, well, like, how would that work? Because and I wasn't interested enough to actually watch any of the videos. Um, uh, the thing that was kind of curious to me is how you get the 90 degree bend because what a rocket stove is, is you have a combustion chamber and one way for air to go in, which is usually, you know, laterally or in a horizontal direction uh, where you feed in your fuel and then a 90 degree bend from the combustion chamber to go up where the flue gases go up. And what's great about rocket stoves is that they burn fuel really efficiently uh, because it's nice and focused. Air goes in one direction, out the other. When you run a campfire, the air is trying to get up, the air is trying to get down and in. It can be, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, kind of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It begins with a T. Turbulence. <laughs> There's a lot of turbulence in there, and it can make the fuel not burn as efficiently. Uh, also, with the walls uh, being there, they're reflecting the heat back in, reflecting the heat back into your fuel. Again, it's making the uh, the fuel more burn more efficiently, and you're directing the heat into whatever you're cooking uh, up on top more efficiently. So instead of like uh, the campfire uh, analogy, instead of the heat kind of radiating off in every direction, it's going directly into the food that you want to cook. So you can uh, get more done with less fuel because all the the heat that's being released from your fuel, well, you know, not all, but more of the heat that's released from your fuel is going into uh, completing the task that you want to uh, complete with it. Also, if you're thinking about things like, you know, it's WROL, SHGF, Teotihuacan, whatever, you know, you want to cook something, you want to be outside, but you don't want to have a big smoke signal going up, burning fuel efficiently really reduces smoke. When fires are burning uh, dirty, uh, burning inefficiently, that's when you get all the smoke. If you can burn them nice and hot, nice and clean, you don't get a lot of that smoke going up. So you can do it a little bit more covert if that's the of interest to you too, uh, as well. So that's a little uh, background on what rocket stoves are. And uh, in this video, I want to talk about how I put this one together. Now, I've uh, I mentioned I never actually watched any of the videos because I was always kind of thinking, well, like, how do you do that 90 degree bend? Like, how do they kind of figure that part out? Because if you you know about cinder blocks, it's all built out of cinder blocks. They just have one hole that goes one direction and out the others. No, they don't have cinder blocks that have like 90 degree bends in them. So I, I was just never interested enough to watch them because I was just like, well, I can. I could always build a rocket stove. I could figure it out anyway. Well, I was talking to someone the other day. They watched a video, and apparently it's not magic. What they do, uh, it, well, there's two different things. They, they talk about having an H-block, uh, an H-block cinder block. And what an H-block cinder block is, I have been to the hardware store all the time. I buy cinder blocks all the time. I've never seen anything that fits the description of what an H-block is. But apparently an H-block, well, it, these are heavy. Uh, an H block is a center block, uh, but with the top and the bottom removed, so it creates the letter H. And if you can imagine, if you remove 
this wall here, you can have air go in this side and then, you know, go up there. So that's like kind of your 90 degree bend. I have never in my life ever seen an H block at the hardware store. I don't doubt that they exist somewhere, but they're certainly not very common. So I wanted to come up with a way of putting this together where you don't need this magical H block and you can do it very easily. The way that I put it together, I'm just gonna deconstruct this in front of you guys. Put these guys over here. I'll just show you what I, what I did here. I guess this is as far down as I need to uh, break it open. Uh, what I did is I put three blocks on the bottom uh, and that kind of makes the platform. This is the burn chamber right here, which is, well, I'll open it up a little more. That's the burn chamber right there. And uh, get this out of here. What I did is I, I built this out of uh, two different sizes of cinder blocks. I have eight inch cinder blocks and I have six inch cinder blocks. Um, all the uh, cinder blocks are, well, I don't know about all, I don't want to say all, but the cinder blocks, generally speaking, are eight inches by, I don't know, are they 18 or 16? I forget like what their length is. But the variable uh, thing is the width here, uh, the width of these, uh, these holes. These, uh, this one here is a six inch cinder block. And that heavier one that I picked up earlier is an eight inch center block. Here you go, put them next to each other. So you can see this one's a little more narrow, this one's a little wider. I had kind of a variety of center blocks around here, a bunch of eights, a bunch of sixes, and I used them in combination to uh, create this kind of combustion chamber here. So what I did is I took uh, three eight inch cinder blocks and just put them on the side to make kind of like a table here, the, the table where the burning happens. And then, move these out of the way more. And then right in front, you have one where, this is where the fuel goes in. So this is like kind of the tunnel where you're putting fuel in. This is where it burns. Now, uh, to create the chamber here, what I did is I decided that I wanted this to be a little bit more narrow. And the reason for that is that I wanted to be able to take an eight inch cinder block, which I will hover up on the top. I wanted to be able to have it kind of hover up here over the chamber. And I wanted this, these side supports to be in a little bit. So you'd support it on either side. I also wanted to have a back wall over here. Now, if I had an eight inch center block, a full width eight inch center block, you couldn't get these, these sides in uh, far enough. So, voila, what I used, yeah, actually I'll, I'll use the same one I had earlier. I used a six inch center block on the back here. So what this does is this makes it so I can take the two center blocks on the side and I can bring them about an inch in each. Six inches, uh, you know, is, two inches less than eight. So I can take the side center blocks and I can, uh, I can bring them in a little bit closer. So I'm gonna do that. Now the side center blocks could be sixes or eights, whichever way you wanna do it. I looks like I happen to use sixes on the side. But the idea is that they come in here and they overlap a little right there. And on the other side, might as well line up my burn chambers. There we go. So now what it does is it creates a footprint where I can put a full 8 inch cinder block right on the top. Take that and put it up on the top. I'm going to rotate it so this ugly part's facing away. I don't want that horrible looking front facing me. And it just sits right up on the top there. And that way I've got my walls, they're supporting this top brick. And at that point you can kind of stop and I see a lot of things. Um, online when I've seen people build these. That's kind of as far as they go. What I did is I took another cinder block and I put it on top of that. And why did I do that? What does that do? Uh, it does a couple things. One is um, I don't have to lean over as far. If I want to stand in front of it, I don't have to be hunched over because it gets my pots about eight inches higher. Uh, and the other nice thing about it is that the taller you make the chimneys, uh, the more draft you get going through because uh, as the hot air is going up, it's creating suction, pulling in more air to uh, feed the fire. So if you have a longer uh, chimney, it's creating more of that suction because the air, you know, it gets going in a nice direction. It's going up, up, up and drawing more air in. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I'm sure there's an upper limit <laughs> where if you made it like up a mile high, at some point the gas cools down, that creates a problem. But having it a little bit taller creates a little bit more of a, uh, a siphoning effect. So you bring in more, more air from the front uh, as it pours up the top. Uh, the other items that I have that uh, kind of relate to this are just got a, a grate. And the grate is important, uh, not uh, just because, you know, you want to barbecue things on top, but let's say you're going to put a pot on there. Uh, if you put a pot on top and there is not a, uh, a grate there, it's going to create a seal 
around your hole. If this, in this instance, you have two holes at the top, so you can put two pots up there. But if I put a pot right here, uh, and it creates a complete seal around this hole, or you know, close to a complete seal, all the, all the gas is just going to go through this one. You're not going to get gas coming up through there. You're not going to get the hot uh, flames and fire licking the bottom of your pot there. So you want to have some kind of a gap so you can have the flue gas and the fire kind of coming out through there. So whether you do it with a grate or just some metal bars or whatever, you need something. I mean, don't do it with wooden sticks. Those won't last very long. But you want something on top so that it'll allow air to come up and around it. Uh, the other thing I have here is, uh, well, this is just an old metal uh, tin lid. and uh, I grabbed this because I was uh, heating something up on one of the burners, and I figured why not, like I said before, maximize how much heat is going out through that burner. So, uh, you know, I put this on here to kind of minimize how much heat comes out through this hole, so, you know, the heat comes out just through one hole. Uh, you could also take like a piece of sheet metal, it would work even better if you could kind of slide it underneath so you get like an even better seal. But as long as you got something on there, it'll, you know, block some of the gases and most of them will go up over there. The other thing that I have here, uh, this is just a metal cooking tray. And the reason I have this is so uh, I can leave this out and if it's raining, you know, I can just, I can cover it up. And the benefit of that is that all the, uh, the hot uh, embers and things like that, they can just be uh, left in there and they will uh, stay dry. So the next time you want to heat the thing up, you're not trying to heat up a bunch of wet embers because it keeps them dry. Also, uh, putting a lid on the thing, uh, you know, maybe you want to take this off carefully because, you know, the, the hot grate would be hot and you burn your fingers. If, if you took this and you put it directly on there and really kind of create a bit of a seal so air doesn't come up there as, as well. And then, you know, I wouldn't recommend necessarily a board, but like another metal tray over on this side, you can close off the air here and you could extinguish what's in there pretty well. Uh, because when you're done using it, why not, uh, you know, retain as much of those embers in there and have them just kind of get suffocated out. That way, when you want to light it again, it's that much easier. The easiest thing in the world to light, other than I guess like gasoline vapor, is, uh, you know, nice, dry, old embers. In fact, whenever I go camping, I oftentimes will bring old, uh, old embers with me uh, so that the next time I want to start a campfire, I can start a campfire very easily. You can, uh, you can take a match and you can light an ember and just go from there. It, it acts like tinder. You can take a magnifying glass. If it's sunny, you can get a, a, an ember uh, turning red very easily just with a magnifying glass. Uh, nice dry embers are really easy ways of starting fire. So if you can preserve your embers and make them so they don't just burn down to nothing, uh, it makes it easier the next time you want to start a fire. Um, so, uh, so far I, I rate this as being a pretty, pretty useful device. I, I'm going to see how well the uh, cinder blocks hold up uh, over time. I've lit a couple of fires in this. You know, we'll see, you know, if after a couple of months, maybe the heat is too intense and it creates some problems in the center blocks. If that happens, I'll let you guys know. But I like this design. I like the simplicity of it. And I like that it's very versatile. As a matter of fact, uh, I was thinking about maybe adding a couple extra cinder blocks here, one, two. And then off of this surface, I could put some boards and it could make like a, a surface for, you know, when you're cooking, you always want another surface for putting utensils, putting other pots as things kind of pop on and off. Uh, so it, it's really versatile. I like it and it's super inexpensive. Uh, cinder blocks are only a couple of bucks each. At least last time I bought them, that's the price they were at. Uh, so I like it. It's really, uh, you can really customize it to uh, whatever you want it to be. This is my approach. You can come up with your approach. But the basic idea of a rocket stove is air goes in one direction. That's where you're also putting the fuel. Uh, there's a combustion chamber and the heat goes up the top. So any way you can kind of swing that using cinder blocks is going to work pretty well. And the other thing uh, I'll just throw in at the end here, which is great about this, is safety. If you have a campfire and the wind's kind of whipping by, you know, pieces of your campfire can kind of uh, fling out. Uh, we haven't had an awful lot of uh, rain here lately. And there's a lot of dry stuff here. Uh, you know, if I had a campfire here, it'd be very easy for an ember to pop out and start lighting up this grass. But having the fire so separated by having it up on these uh, cinder blocks and having, uh, you know, uh, bricks all around it, it, it creates a degree of safety. Now, I wouldn't like just leave this and walk away because, um, you know, still you want to be careful. You don't want to burn the forest down. But uh, it's certainly a heck of a lot safer than having a just an open campfire and more efficient and more covert. So that's it. I hope, uh, you know, this has been helpful to you, get you inspired. I think once you start building things on your own, uh, it's really contagious. You build one thing and it gives you new ideas about expanding, improving, you know, making them better. And then share your videos on YouTube and, you know, share with the rest of us the improvements that you've come up with. The only one I came up with is, you know, two cinder blocks on the side and make a table. <laughs> if you come up with anything more amazing than that, please uh, make sure you let me know either in the comments or make your own video. That's it. And thanks for watching. And if you want to uh, get your name in the end of the Alien Invasion Episode 2, 
patreon.com slash praxis prepper. Links down below. Again, as a dollar a month, you can join the team and get uh, thanked in all the credits. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.